Pastor here. This is my co-host today, Julie Potaker, and we are talking about love today. And uh, not your typical love, you know, love is a big word, a lot of people throw it around. Uh, we're talking about how to use love to create success in all areas of your life. It's going to be an amazing show, so stay tuned. Todd, are you ready? All right, let's, let's do it. It's time to take a journey to find your courage, break through your limits, and master your destiny. It's time for Ken D. Foster's Voices of Courage. Ken brings you some of the most courageous people on the planet that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. It's time to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. It's time for Voices of Courage. And here's your host, Ken D. Foster. So I have a question for you today. Why is it so hard for so many of us to wrap our attention around loving ourselves? Well, for me, I thought the concept was a little self-centered when I first considered it. I figured there are enough self-centered people in the world, and why should I be one of them thinking only about me? But then I started thinking about all the times that I showed up at work or a party or even at a family event that I felt less than other people. Have you ever thought, yeah, you were maybe not as good as others or felt a little less than other people? If so, this show can change your life. I'm calling it The Courage to Love, and I'm your host, Ken D. Foster. In studio with me today is my co-host, Julie Potaker. Julie is a fabulous individual who is an author, a teacher, a lecturer, and her mission in life is to alleviate suffering. Julie, welcome. Thanks. It's so fun to be here. Isn't it fun to be here? I mean, you know, we've been wanting to do this for a while, so here we are. Especially talking about love. <laughs> love. Love is a big subject. Listen, I remember a time when I showed up uh, for work, and I was sick and tired of being treated like a second-class citizen. Ever been there? <laughs> Everybody's been there. Everybody's been there, right? You know, I was uh, always saying uh, yes to my boss's whims and, uh, and my coworkers, and I really didn't seem to have my own voice. I didn't seem to stand for anything. And I wanted to kind of look good at all costs, but it cost, it did. It cost me a lot. See, every time I was in that people-pleasing mode and trying to make myself stand out by maybe even helping others, I'd get sliced up by other coworkers or uh, maybe even my boss or my friends. And then I would start to feel less than. I'd feel like uh, maybe I was kind of a punching bag for other people's um, jokes, uh, you know, they'd, they'd project their faults onto me and laugh at me. And I was like, what, what am I doing here? You know, it, but it was right about that time I thought, you know, I need to get really honest with myself. And I felt overlooked. I felt overburdened and like uh, nothing was really going my way. But I really didn't know at the time what I wanted, except I was hoping to be appreciated and loved. Can you relate to that, Julie? Yeah, and I think maybe you were having an empowered with choice issue, which our guest will be discussing today. It, well, I, th I think that's a really good point. You know, and I was trying to, you know, at the time look good, trying to be nice, trying to be kind, trying to have other people validate me. And uh, what I was discovering is that nobody was validating myself the way I felt like I needed to be validated. So at some point, I realized that focusing on what others think and do or say left me empty and really forgetting who I was and what I stand for. You know, it took me some time, but uh, I started to switch it around. And I think a lot of my audience can relate to this. Living from the outside in or the inside out, right? So instead of looking at other people's, uh, what their expressions were, what they thought about me, I really started to go, well, wait a second, there must be something about love here. Maybe I need to turn that around and start loving my own voice, my own message, what I stand for, my values, my, my own wisdom. And once I started grasping that concept, things started to get better. Right? When you're enough? When you realize you're enough and that you're worthy, I mean, that's a very big deal. A lot of people walk around thinking that they're a fraud, 
Right. Even when they have the success, they've got that like little kernel of, oh my God, they're going to find me out that I'm actually not a lawyer. I'm actually not a, you know, you have the degree on the wall, but you still feel like a fraud. I couldn't uh, uh, agree with you more. That fraud piece uh, for many years in my life was there. It permeated everything I did. And, you know, I, I at one point for me, I was like, I'm so tired of feeling less than others. And, uh, you know, of course, the opposite. When uh, you know, I'd walk in and go, my ego would come out, and then I'd feel greater than everybody. The grandiose so, the piece. The grandiose piece, yeah. right? I'm here. Can anybody relate to that? I know. It's very human. It's human. It's very it? human. And that's where, as a mindful self-compassion teacher and practitioner, I just give myself compassion for all those feelings. It's like, oh, the poor little Julie in there. Right. She needs to be nourished and protected. Right. She needs, you know, she needs to know her worth. And, and I just oh, bring it down. And bring it down. And what I did is I decided, you know what? I, my goal isn't to be better than somebody or less than somebody. My goal for me was to be equal to. Wow, that was a new concept for me. I didn't have to look down, look up to somebody or look down at somebody. I could just be part of them. So for me, that was a, a, a serious spiritual journey because I had to take a look at who I was and who am I at the core, right? Right. Yeah. So, so that's, that's kind of what this show is all about today. Listen, if you are a person that uh, can relate to this, here's what I know to be true. We're walking along in life, right? And, you know, maybe you're taking care of people or doing things to make uh, yourself look great or, you know, whatever you do that uh, you walk around, maybe a little unconscious as to the real feelings inside of yourself. But when you tune into yourself, you start to feel that presence, that power, that passion that's in, in you. That's the voice that really speaks to, that's the voice of the soul. That's the voice that we need to come out and speak with, right? And listen, uh, to do that, sometimes you've got to stop what you're doing, take time for yourself, go within. That's what I do. And what I found is that it's like, if I'm on an airplane, the airplane's going down, right? And the os oxygen masks come out uh, of the, uh, uh, the overhead. Um, who am I putting the os oxygen mask on first, my children or me, right? My instinct is to put them on my kids. But listen, if I'm not putting it on myself first and then taking care of the kids, right, um, what's going to happen is nobody's going to survive. you got to take care of yourself first. That's the whole point here. So some of the... Um, uh, I want to talk about some of the great blocks to, to feeling our love, Julie. You know, and of course, fear comes up, right? Everybody's afraid, right? And vulnerability, mm, courage, courage, courage. Yeah, can't have right? courage without vulnerability. No, vulnerability. you can't. Yeah, no, and and really, you know, past relationship wounds, which is really what the guest is going to be illuminating today. How do you release those wounds from past relationships so that you can actually fix yourself and then show up better? Exactly. Exactly. Well, here's what I find. You know, I, I'll give you uh, my little seven step or five step. Uh, it's actually six step process. <laughs> All right, good. Maybe I'll throw in an extra set step. Listen, first is what I look at. I look at what is not working. And I don't do this like every month. <laughs> I do it every day. Like I just look at what's not working in my life. Right. And the second thing I do is I get clear with um, when I want to bring more love in my life, I remember my values. I remember who I am. I remember what I stand for. And, and I'm, I'm not afraid to express those values, right? And then the next step for me is uh, I get really clear with my non-negotiables, okay? So part of that might be for me, um, let's say I've, I've been walking around feeling less than uh, the next guy. I say, you know what, enough of that. Like Julie said, I like what you said. You know, I give myself some compassion. Some, so I take a moment to relax and in, enjoy the presence that I am, right? And I set up a boundary around that. I say, listen, I'm not allowing anything in that isn't unlike, that's unlike love. If I'm not loving myself, then I'm not, I'm really not at a place where I can really expand my presence. If right? you don't love yourself, you can't, you can't get love from somebody else. You can't accept it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, I had a woman come, come in, a client of mine, and she, uh, she was feeling depressed. And one of the things I, I asked her to do was for the next seven days to just have loving thoughts, just think about love. 
And she told me that little kids would walk up to her in the grocery store because they would feel this energy, this vibration, this love that was emanating from her. And she said, I didn't even like kids that much. But, you know, that's what love does. Because you can't feel loving and hopeless in the same time in your brain. That's, that's exactly right. And depression is hopelessness. Yeah. And, you know, they're two different energies, aren't they? I love what you said. So try feeling depressed and loving at the same time. You can't it's do impossible. it. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. So that's what I do. I bring in more love. Uh, and the other piece I bring in for me is that playful piece, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to be playing here in the next segment with uh, Dr. Gary Saylor. And he's written a, written a really amazing book. It's called Safe to Love Again. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. The most talented athletes in the world rely on a coach to get better. And the most successful business people do the same. I have found working with Ken D. Foster to be an extraordinary experience. He helped me to expand my vision, increase profits, and showed me the way to have more fulfillment and success in my life. Ken D. Foster is the coach's coach for business and life. He has been nicknamed the coach of the successful and wealthy. Ken is an instrumental part of my team and the success I have generated over the past 12 months. Ken gave me the strategies to increase productivity, reduce turnover, and take my business to the next level. So what's holding you back? Ken D. Foster is a master business coach with proven strategies to dramatically increase efficiency and productivity while maximizing individual development and fulfillment. Explore your possibilities. For a free consultation, log on to KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. There comes a time when you know you need to restart and regain control of your life. A time to seek freedom from the anxiety, addiction, and other issues that may be bringing you down. A time to heal and re-emerge as the real you. Villa Kalima is a holistic residential recovery program exclusively for women for individualized treatment. Villa Kalima offers proven clinical and holistic therapies for the mind, body, and spirit to assure sustainable recovery. Villa Kalima focuses on healing the cause, not temporarily masking symptoms. It's the only way to truly recover and find yourself again. Villa Kalima is located in a beautiful, peaceful, resort-like setting and is a licensed and accredited residential treatment center accepting a variety of health insurances. Start your healing and renewal today by calling Villa Kalima in La Costa, California at 760-814-8214. 760-814-8214. Villa Kalima, a place for transformation. We're back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting VoicesOfCourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Hey, welcome back to the show. Today our show is called The Courage to Love. I'm in studio with my co-host, Julie Podiker. Did it again, Julie. <laughs> Judy Potiker. Boy, okay, I'll get it right. I love I'll get it. it right. All right. So, um, listen, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Women's Wisdom. They're San Diego's premier networking and relationship building group for purpose driven and soul inspired female entrepreneurs. If you're in the San Diego area or if you're online and you want to connect with a group of amazing women entrepreneurs that are really making a difference in the world, this is the group. You can find them at womenswisdom.net. That's womenswisdom.net. Also want to thank uh, our listeners for tuning into our show. Just picked up another station. We're now in 103 stations. We got just picked up Washington, D.C. That's awesome. Welcome everybody out there in Washington and Virginia. It's awesome to have you on our show. Uh, if you're new to the show, we're all about empowering our audience to, to step into their power, transforming their lives, and becoming an unstoppable force that inspires others along the way. And you can find us on the web at VoicesOfCourage.us or just Google us, Voices of Courage. Listen, if you're new to the show and you want to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible, you're in the right place. Voices of Courage is an amazing show. Julie, I'm so glad you're here with me. And I want to welcome our guest, uh, Gary. Are you on the line? I'm on live, Kenneth. All yeah, right. I, hey, let me. And Julie. I'm Hello. So Good morning. To have you. <laughs> Good morning. Well, listen, uh, let me introduce you. Based on a field of study called Attachment Theory, the Science of Intimate Relationships, Dr. Saylor's insights and profound and oftentimes immediate 
impact has transformed the lives of many, many, many people, thousands of people. As a transformational relationship mentor, he helps people rewrite the rules for love in their brains. He empowers singles to reclaim the rights for a full soulmate relationship. And with couples, he helps resolve the conflict and differences so that they can have the love they dream about. I am so excited to talk to you about all of this. How did you get started? How did I get started in, in, in the love in, business? In the love business. Well, you know, for me, it was trying to figure out two divorces after having spent a lifetime doing work. Um, you know, I, like I share in the book, being seven, I noticed that everybody in the family wasn't happy. There were divorces. I decided I'm never going to be divorced. So when I go to college, I, I picked two degrees that to stave that off, psychology and religion, and my senior year this professor calls me in for this this personality test, and we're talking about it in his office. And just as I'm leaving, he says, "Oh, I forgot to tell you, you got a ninety percent chance of a divorce." You know, like like you know, you know, happy, ouch. you know, yeah, ouch. ouch, and it's like ouch, and then it me. and then it came true, <laughs> ouch, 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 it, ouch. It came true. I even went a fifth year of college. Delayed graduation, a degree in marriage and family. And then 12 years later, she says, I want a divorce. And I don't understand. I did, I did everything I could. And then I said, well, okay, I'm going to hunker down. And I did like seven and a half years of therapy. Mm. I said, oh, I'm good to go, man. I've done This time I did my work as a guy, you know. Mm. Walked in there, got a female therapist. I even told her I want a woman therapist. I want to make sure a woman gets all my issues done, right? And boom. Four years later, it's again, I'm going, I don't get it. I do more therapy. And then I notice that nothing's really changed. I keep picking the same women, or I keep, or now I'm showing up as Mr. Wrong myself. So the women, I'm let's scared. say you were picking blondes, and now they showed up as a brunette, <laughs> but they say I had the same issues. Is I wish it? it was that easy. <laughs> I, I thought my first and second wife were as different as they could be. Mm. Mm. Now, and uh, externally, you would never confuse the two. Okay, very, but inside the relationship, I got the same feeling. <laughs> and is that because that's what your brain from when you were a little boy was <laughs> wired to expect? Exactly. The little sorry. boy under the chair, I almost cried. Mm, yeah, 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 that was the one at seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, there's more to that story that I didn't even put in print, but um, yeah, there was. Uh, now, that when you're when you're getting beat by a chair, do you want to be a part of a we? No, 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 no. That we gets like no. That's there's no cherished. It's the wrong cherished. <laughs> All puns intended. Do, do you want to <laughs> summarize really quickly that story for our listeners that didn't have the opportunity to read your book yet? They're all going to want to yeah. read your book and get your book. But I just yeah. made reference to a story that people might not know what it is. Yeah, I mean, we're always looking, if you're out there, we're always looking for the same feeling, a reference feeling we got for love and early relationships. And the bug in the program is it doesn't always look for the good ones. If you were given the bad ones, it looks for those too. So if you were given uncherished, you'll look for that. And when I was seven, you know, um, I uh, came home one day, and how can I tell this one? Well, anyway, um there was an incident where my mother uh, wanted me to um, do some certain things, and I and I didn't agree with those things. Seven year olds sometimes don't do that, right? Right. <laughs> and when I didn't comply, she literally threw me over a kitchen table, pulled the ta- table out, and beat me with a kitchen chair. Hmm. And at, and at the, at that point, a part of me says. I don't want to be a part of this family. Right. Uh, what I didn't tell about is that that afternoon I packed a pack a backpack and I I'm seven years old and I go to the end of the block and I'm going to run away. Oh, honey, honey. And and I'm thinking, well, mom said I couldn't go past this block, but I guess I'm going to run away. I better. And then I start thinking it through, and as honest got truth, I began thinking, well, wait a minute. Timmy ran away with Lassie, and he got caught, and I don't have Lassie. So I'm kind of screwed here. <laughs> That's fine. So, so as, a, as a result of that, Gary, um, as a yeah. result of that 
that childhood trauma. Um, how did that show up now as as an adult? How did how did that how did that manifest in your life? That that there feeling a, of not being safe. Right. That, yeah. And not feeling safe, but in a particular key, it doesn't feel safe to belong. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm. Not to belong. It is better to be by yourself. It is better to have distance. It is better to make sure you can do it on your own. And it also took away my right to assert. There was no place where I could say no. I couldn't give proper feedback. It felt horrible giving. And the funny thing was, is that was was kind of a demasculization experience for you, as far as the uh, the asserting goes. Yeah, yeah. And and wasn't so much masculization for me as I, I dare not have a voice. With this okay. woman, so you. So felt- what I learned was not to have a voice with almost any woman, and so they never got the proper feedback in relationships. And then I always wondered why they weren't attuned, and then I'd withdraw, and I could never figure out why the relationships were going were going south on me. So how? So okay. So how do we heal something like that? That's a great example of a childhood trauma and and the, the repercussions. How has that changed? How how does and what's in your book that can help us change that? Those okay. childhood traumas. So what I talk about in the book is we get these four feelings that tell a secure baby or a secure child or a secure adult, for that reason, that they're loved. Are you welcomed with joy? Do you feel worthy and nourished to reach out and have your needs? Do you feel cherished and protected? And that means and this is that it feels good to be a me in a we, that you get proper support, proper supervision, which obviously didn't happen in that story. And you get to be empowered with choice and voice, which didn't happen with that story either. Okay? Now, you know, the problem is is if you were given unwelcomed or unworthy or uncherished or un uh or un- disempowered your brain will look for those feelings too. They become reference feelings. So the key is to go back and give your brain a right to feel welcome, a right to feel worthy, a right to feel cherished, and a right to feel empowered, and that it is safe to do so. It was, for me, it was learning that it felt good to be in a we. Now I could create a we. There wasn't some partner try, part of me trying to be the Marlboro made, even though I loved them, both of my wives dearly, right? And not understanding why my first wife said, I feel lonely, because some part of me was always pulling back, because pulling back was the best deal at one point. And, and I do want to make the point, if you're out there listening, if you've created any painful relationship patterns, I can guarantee you that at one time, however limited and painful it was, at, if you track it back far enough, at one time, it was the best deal available. Can okay, you hold well, that listen, I, I've got to, uh, yeah, I've got to take a break. We've got to take a break here. So Hold that thought. We'll be right back, and uh, we're talking to Dr. Gary Saylor, and the book is Safe to Love Again. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. You know you have it, the potential for a more rewarding life, a life that matters. But how do you get there? The answer is in a best-selling book by the coach of the successful and wealthy, Ken D. Foster. The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Wisdom to Awaken Your Hidden Genius and Transform Your Life. With this powerful yet amazingly simple daily guide, your future is in your hands. You will be empowered to unlock your potential, bring out your true gifts, increase your wealth, and take your life and business to a new level. Get your life-transforming copy of Ken D. Foster's The Courage to Change Everything by going to CourageToChange.us. That's CourageToChange.us. Quite frankly, there's no other book like this. Imagine what your life could be like if you had at your fingertips the success principles to create the life you've always wanted. Are you ready to live your dream? Go to CourageToChange.us. With Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome back to the show. And again, if you're just tuning in to Voices of Courage, we're a show that empower our audiences 
do do things that are a little impossible, right? See things, see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and like I said, do the impossible. That's what we're about. And uh, listen, today, if you're on Facebook, I've got uh, hundreds of people watching us right now. Today, I'm giving away the Release, Renew, Evolve book. It's actually a PDF online to all my listeners who make a comment on the show on Facebook uh, or Instagram and tag a couple friends. So we're watching on Insta, Facebook and uh Instagram right now I got my team out there so if you make a uh, a comment you know put a comment up there you know let other people know about us we're going to give you the release renew evolve now why is that important well this book is a book that'll help take you to uh, levels uh, uh, deep within your consciousness so that you can let go of any subconscious blocks to your success it's guaranteed to work works for everybody it's like taking a dark pair of sunglasses off when you end this uh, course you'll see things in a much brighter way all right, well, I'm back uh, in studio with my co-host, Julie Potaker, and we're on the line uh, with us is Dr. Gary Saylor. Julie, you had a question for Gary. Yeah, so Gary, right at the end before we went to a break, we were talking about getting to those early childhood traumas and getting mm -hmm. to the feelings. And I know in your book and also your workbook, which I checked out online, which is excellent, you help people do that. Can you... Explain the mechanism for that, for that reprogramming. Okay. So, you know, you know we, I argue that from the time you're one years old, and we know there's science behind it, so it's just not me arguing it's that. A brain is programmed what you can expect. Your permission slips in a relationship, so to speak. I call them rights. We call them permission slips. They're templates, too. But we get these, this, this, this blueprint for love, and it's based on, and a well-loved baby is given Welcome with joy. Oh, so happy you're here. You know, oh, there's a little cute Julie, right? And then there's, you know, worthy to have your needs. The baby reaches out for the needs, and you, and if you get it wrong, you keep reaching out until you get it right. You know, attuned responses. There's cherish and protect. When it comes a toddler, separates, it gets, the, you know, the child gets to separate and be a me, but knows it's got backup. Wants separation, but also supervision and support. You get to be a we. And then you get empowered in choice. Well, so you get to create your own experience. Mommy doesn't tell you to play with the trucks when you want to play with the car, right, or whatever, you know. And you get to have a voice. You get to have speak up. You know, sometimes it's called the terrible twos, but nevertheless, it gives us these rights. And then we, with these four feelings, everybody creates a secure love style, and then they go out and pick partners based on that. Do they give me those feelings back? They become reference feelings. And that's how the secure pick, create, and maintain really good relationships. The bug in the program is that if you were given other reference feelings, the brain will use those too. Right. So if you were given unwelcomed, you got to swap it out for welcome or you're going to pick people and you're going to do things in relationships that create unwelcome. And nobody feels loved when they're unwelcome. If you weren't given worthy, you got to restore. Or that feeling in your guts, in your mind, <clears throat> that I am worthy to have my needs met. And worthy people don't choose takers. They don't choose people that make them feel unworthy. Cherishing people know they have a right to be a we, not just coupled, you know, not miss monogamous, you know, but they get to have a we, real teammate, real support. Someone's got my back. And when you and if they were given disempowered, they have to swap it out for a gut level feeling. This isn't just story. It's not just coaching and skills. This is reprogramming the brain at the basis level to feel these feelings, and it's safe to have okay. that feeling. Okay. So I um I'm an experienced dependent neuroplasticity trainer, right? Mm -hmm. From Rick Hansen. I I'm a He's my mentor, and I took his class, so I help people reprogram their brains for happiness and resilience. So using your stuff in any one of those examples, if you felt unworthy, would you then coach your person to call up times when they felt worthy and to re-experience those times so that they could make little happy bridges to counteract the trauma bridge? Is well, that what is. you're actually saying in terms of neuroscience, I'm questioning? Yeah. Well, in terms of neuroscience, it's similar. I call it, it's called re-imprinting, okay, which is very similar. We really, we, we go back and we find the exact moment or close to it. Sometimes you can't get, but you can get far enough back that you're, you're, you're close enough to the original. And you find the exact moment uh, or pretty close to it 
that someone uh, lost that right. So when the, the brain pulled back and said, having a full right to belong isn't the best deal, it's better to separate, okay? Or reaching out isn't my uh, the best deal, it's time to not reach out for my needs. Uh, reaching out for my voice, that's not a good, it's better to feel disempowered and not. You find that moment. And then you work with the little one, usually the little one. Sometimes it can be later, okay? And then you begin to, and the state has to be in the room. They have to feel that. If it's, they're just talking about it, they're in their head, nothing good happens. So you're saying you know it's what? somatic, it's body, body mm-hmm. felt. Yes, and then I often ask them, and to make sure it's body felt, where are you feeling that feeling? So like they say, so say they say, oh, I always felt invaded. Okay, like I did with a client a few weeks ago. I go, okay, let's go back on the timeline. Let's track all the times that you felt invaded to the very first time. The little one said, "If I'm in a real, if I'm in a we, I feel invaded." Mm-hmm. Okay, they find that. So, so then you find it. Then you start adding emotional resources through a variety of means. So you're training the brain to fire off uh, uh, uncherished to cherished, uncherished, to, and then it just begins to. You're using Hebb's law. To, so to speak, you know, what wires together, fires together. So right. you're adding resources and the brain goes, wait a second. And you're making sure, you got to make sure that you're adding safety as well. You don't want to scare them to death. You're doing all that. Sometimes you're reframing and then the system. Now, there's multiple imprints in anybody's attachment system. And one, there's no one shot does it all. But you find those, and eventually you cut, you snip all the little cords that are keeping the hot air balloon from rising, and pretty soon the brain rises into love. So, which is why let the cover me is let me is. ask you. <laughs> let me let me back up just a taste here, okay? Um, okay. What what are the symptoms that somebody would need this kind of work, right? Um, lost what? relationships, feeling unworthy. What 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 do you like predominantly? What what why do people come to you? Okay, what, predominantly, what are they experiencing? they're having a, they're either singles or couples who are having a Groundhog Day. If they're singles, the Groundhog Day is I keep choosing men or women who give me the same feeling, the same pattern, and I don't know how it keeps showing up. Or the other one is I'm scared to death of getting back in a relationship. Or right, if they're couples, they're going we don't get it. We keep going over and we're having the same argument and the same distancing thing and the same frustrating thing happen over and over again. We're fighting and we can't stop it. What's going on? Those two groundhogs actually go back. If you're single, it goes back to a missing right. You're always having the right, the experience that you have the right for. So women will say, I don't understand, but they're they're either married or they're takers. Well, you know, wow. well, some part okay. is not doesn't have a right to have his needs met. I get it. Okay, okay. Listen, I'm going to take a break here in a minute, but uh, before I do, I want to uh, give out your website. I want people to know how to find you, Gary. Cool. So go so, ahead. <laughs> oh, it's at www.garysalyer. S A L Y E R. GarySalyer. dot com, and there's a reference to the book. You can find that it's on Amazon too. And then there's something called Love Notes, where you can sign up for a bunch of two to four minute videos that preview some of the book. And there's stuff by John Gray and Ario Ford, and it's for singleton couples. So GarySalyer.com, all sorts of good stuff there. So let me, uh, it's uh, Gary, S-A-L-Y-E-R.com. That's Gary, S-A-L-Y-E-R.com. That's for the book. And listen, John Gray says, if you, if you have ever lost hope of love, this is the book to read. The book is called Safe to Love Again, How to Release the Pain of Past Relationships and Create the Love You Deserve. We'll be back in just a moment. Gary, can you stay on for one last second? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. Awesome. We'll we'll be right back. All right. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. The most talented athletes in the world rely on a coach to get better. And the most successful business people do the same. I have found working with Ken D. Foster to be an extraordinary experience. He helped me to expand my vision, increase profits, and showed me the way to have more fulfillment and success in my life. Ken D. Foster is the coach's coach for business and life. He has been nicknamed the coach of the successful and wealthy. Ken is an instrumental part of my team and the success I have generated over the past 12 months. Ken gave me the strategies to increase productivity, reduce turnover, and take my business to the next level. So what's holding you back? 
Ken D. Foster is a master business coach with proven strategies to dramatically increase efficiency and productivity while maximizing individual development and fulfillment. Explore your possibilities. For a free consultation, log on to KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. There comes a time when you know you need to restart and regain control of your life. A time to seek freedom from the anxiety, addiction, and other issues that may be bringing you down. A time to heal and re-emerge as the real you. Villa Kalima is a holistic residential recovery program exclusively for women for individualized treatment. Villa Kalima offers proven clinical and holistic therapies for the mind, body, and spirit to assure sustainable recovery. Villa Kalima focuses on healing the cause, not temporarily masking symptoms. It's the only way to truly recover and find yourself again. Villa Kalima is located in a beautiful, peaceful, resort-like setting and is a licensed and accredited residential treatment center accepting a variety of health insurances. Start your healing and renewal today by calling Villa Kalima in La Costa, California at 760-814-8214. 760-814-8214. Villa Kalima, a place for transformation. We're back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome back to the show. We are here in studio. I have a co-host today. It's awesome. Julie's here in studio with me. So glad you're here, Julie. Me too. It's fun. I love it. Isn't this fun? Yeah. And on the line, we have Dr. Gary Saylor. And Gary says this, thanks to neuroplasticity of the brain, we have the capability to recapture what was lost and change our lost our love style to one that is sustainable and which can dramatically improve and re-energize the state of existing relationships. So... I'd like to talk about existing relationships. Yeah. So, Gary, I just have to tell you that I was sort of cramming reading your book before this interview mm-hmm. and watching your videos. And I I have a really loving, solid, healthy marriage that's 30 years old already. But we've been together 38 years. And I, I told my husband I cherished and adored him. <laughs> Which, which those aren't words that I normally use. I would say, I love you, or how are you, or whatever. And he looked at me, and he's like, wow, that's so sweet. That's so nice to hear. Now, it felt awkward saying those words to me, even though, even though it's true. So I think the point is, is that even married couples yeah. that have been together for a long time can improve by reading your book. So let me ask you a question. Um, what... Uh, did writing this book teach you about couples and their struggles? Oh, my God, there was so much. One, I think the biggest thing that this writing this book taught me, because I had beta readers reading it, and, oh, you know, for couples, you are dealing with hopelessness. When a couple walks in and you work with couples, the question that is in both of their minds is, is it hopeless yet? Is it hopeless yet? Mm. Because, and they usually have like one foot out the door mm. because of that. And it's helping them realize the biggest move you can make working with couples is to let them see that they have these dueling missing rights. They've picked each other out exactly for the missing right because that's what the other rights were. To show them that, you know, her missing right to belong when he doesn't include her because he doesn't have a right to create his experience, then makes him, her, come after him. And now he feels even more disempowered. When he's disempowered, he can't choose her, and now they're dueling down. Now, if you can help them see that the real enemy, or the problem, is the pattern and not the partner, now they can become teammates. And when they're teammates, then they can work the problem instead of work each other. Okay, so wait, you you need to say that again. That was profound. It's the pattern and not yes. the partner. Exactly. Because you're because mm-hmm. we vilify our significant others when they don't do what we want. When they don't meet yeah. our expectations yeah, meet our or whatever. Expectations, that's right. Yeah. And what you're saying is that and it's hard for me to wrap my mind around the the concept of a right. 
I like yeah. that though. I like that. What? The, in fact, I wanted you to summarize. What are the four rights that we're talking about here? Just well, there's real, actually real quick. Six. The, 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 you have a right to exist, be comfy and cozy in your body, and be in the world. You have a right to have your needs met. It means it's right to reach out and to take, to give and to take. A right to separate and belong, which means you get to go out and have your life, but come home to a secure base where somebody loves you and says, "Come here, baby. It looks like you had a bad day," you know. A right to create your own experience, which means you get to be able to, you get to be the, the, the master of your own relations, but in an attuned way to others. You get to be good, bad, weak, strong, all those. You get to have a right to have your, a voice to assert and a right to love and be loved right back, not one way or the other. Those six rights are what couples are giving to each other. And it is, and it is amazingly helpful when two, when couples are both trying to work on the relationship, this is the key, though, Julie. You gotta. I mean, if one is saying, "I'm not going to work on it," this, does, you know, saying that it's, it's not the partner may not work in that instance. <laughs> okay, but when both are coming in and saying, well, "You know, we've got problems and we want to work on this. We love each other, and we're not sure it's going to make it, uh, but we would like it to." Now, if I can show them that some part of their brain is running an old deal that was at one time the best deal but doesn't serve love now. And that both of their little ones took the best deal and to help them understand, oh, if, you know, that's what my partner's doing. And now if they can become teammates against the pattern between them, now they can support each other. Now they can, and that's the first move for all couples that want to work on their relationship is to stop making each other wrong and to realize, oh, that's an enduring vulnerability. She really has a missing right to belong, and I need to attend to that. And when, and and likewise, she goes, "Wow, I I just realized that, you know, she he's got a he doesn't really create his own experience that well. No wonder he can't sometimes include me. If I can just help him feel empowered, you know. Now we now we're working with rapport with each other's greatest wounds in a way that both can learn to empower each other rather than judge each other. That is a fundamentally wise move that couples make. When, and it really helps them to start working uh, here, the problem versus the partner. I want to know. Julie and I both want to know this, okay? Is there okay. something that lasting couples, couples that have long-term relationships, all have in common? You know, I always ask this, and it would be interesting to ask uh, Julie what hers. I, always, I have asked <laughs> couples that are married 25 and more years what their one sentence sound by this. And the two favorite ones I've gotten is one woman married 55 years said, oh, it's easy. I take no BS. I give no BS. Oh, I say pick your battles. Pick your battles. Yes. That's just what popped into my mind. What's yours, Ken? Yeah, mine is waking up every day and asking how I can make my wife's life better, and she does the same. Oh, my right? gosh. That's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, that is, that's a, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, the other one I heard that I that I always remembered was, oh, that's easy. You got to have a short memory. That's funny. <laughs> you know, I think I that's, think that's if, important. <laughs> I think if you don't have kids, it would be a lot easier to stay married forever. Mm. I think kids are like, it's it's so much chaos raising kids, and so many of your patterns from your childhood come out and come into conflict that it can it can it can be insane. Oh, absolutely. In fact, we know from couples' research that 67% of the time when ch- couples have children, the, the, the marital satisfaction just plummets. You know, it's a, it's so a, that thir- that, a fair market. That <laughs> you know? 33%, what are they doing different? Oh, you just asked a million dollar question. That's a great question. <laughs> I, I dragged my husband to therapy when I felt I wasn't being heard. Mm-hmm. I would say, listen, I feel like you're, because he's got a strong personality, I've got a strong personality, there'd be a child raising issue coming up, and I would just say, you have to come to my therapist with me, I need a, like an arbitration, basically, we're both trained lawyers, I need somebody that's impartial to sit there and, and mediate so that I can be heard. That's great. Oh. And Gary, I got yeah, answer that question quick. The thirty three percent. How what what do they do? I know therapy might be one. <laughs> what's what's the what? other piece? Because I've got about two minutes here. Minute and a half well, left here. One of the, one of the things they're doing is they're making sure that the we is more important than the children. Mm-hmm. That their their relationship is primary. Mm-hmm. 
they don't get sucked into the weeds where they're being sucked dry because they never and they are turning toward you they're making sure they have face to face time and not just shoulder to shoulder they're not just talking about did the diapers get changed did the mortgage get paid they're making sure they still create the four feelings between them so they're not being drained and the four feelings are welcome with joy empowered with choice Worthy and nourished and cherished and protected. That's awesome. Well, listen, uh, exactly. Gary, I've got a, I've got to run. Uh, the uh, book is Safe to Love Again, and the subtitle is How to Release Pain and Past Relationships to Create the Love You Deserve. Uh, again, let's tell them where to get it. It's at Amazon.com at the moment, or if you go to my website, GarySowder.com, there's a link there, too, uh, for the book. All and right. audience, you can get his workbooks and join his Facebook Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Look up uh, Dr. Gary Saylor, S A L Y E R. And uh, Gary, thank you so much for being on the show. This was enlightening. I love it. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken and Julie. I've, it's been an honor. Thank you. Hope you come back and uh, share some more insights with us. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. You know you have it the potential for a more rewarding life, a life that matters. But how do you get there? The answer is in a best-selling book by the coach of the successful and wealthy, Ken D. Foster. The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Wisdom to Awaken Your Hidden Genius and Transform Your Life. With this powerful yet amazingly simple daily guide, your future is in your hands. You will be empowered to unlock your potential, bring out your true gifts, increase your wealth, and take your life and business to a new level. Get your life-transforming copy of Ken D. Foster's The Courage to Change Everything by going to CourageToChange.us. That's CourageToChange.us. Quite frankly, there's no other book like this. Imagine what your life could be like if you had at your fingertips the success principles to create the life you've always wanted. Are you ready to live your dream? Go to CourageToChange.us. With Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Hey, if you're a woman, pay attention here, especially a woman in the San Diego area. There's an organization called Women's Wisdom, which has been assisting women business owners to not only grow their businesses, but grow their lives too. Since 1991, Women's Wisdom is the San Diego's premier networking and relationship building group for purpose-driven female entrepreneurs. If you'd like to check them out, it's womenswisdom.net. Again, womenswisdom.net. Today, our show is The Courage to Love. I'm in studio with my co-host, Julie Potaker, and we are discussing... How, what are some of the solutions? If you don't have the love you want in your life today, what are some of the solutions to get that? Well, first I want to uh, just talk to the, tell everybody about a new book I have coming out because I think part of this solution to really loving yourself and having more love in yourself is not necessarily reading the next book or going to the next workshop or going to the next, uh, watching the next TV program on it. What I believe we need to do is we need to kind of change how we learn. So it, uh, I think we brought up some good points in the uh, in the last uh, uh, segment. We were talking about, you know, going into the subconscious mind, understanding where the trauma drama came from, and really releasing it. Right. So some of you that are listening to me right now, uh, you can go to my site, uh, KenDFoster.com. There's a book I have out there. It's called Release, Renew, Evolve. That book is designed specifically to get you in touch with the subconscious beliefs, choices, actions of the past, your fears, your harms, your uh, misunderstandings, shame, blame, guilt, anything that's underneath the surface so that you can bring it to the surface, acknowledge what it is, and make a conscious choice to release it. Now, that's part of the process here. There's another piece to that. Once you can release, you've got a, you know, it's like it's a glass, you pour out the water in the glass. Now, what are you going to fill the glass with? Okay. That's where my new book comes in. It's called The Courage to Change Everything Daily Strategies. Daily is the word. Daily Strategies and Wisdom to Unlock Your Genius and Transform Your Life. 
So no matter what level of achievement you are, if you submerge your mind daily in astute wisdom, courageous strategies, and time-tested wealth principles, you're going to redefine what's possible for you. In fact, you will attain your natural state. What's your natural state? It's greatness, right? All of us are brilliant inside of us, but it's kind of sometimes it's like the brain has almost like an old rust built over it. The rust of the old negative beliefs or misinformation or misguided uh, thoughts that we've surrounded our, our life with. And when you can take that off well, with that first book, Release, Renew, Evolve, or working with Julie or working with somebody like Gary Saylor, um, once you can remove that, then you got to fill it back up, right? So this book is uh, we deliver the information in bite-sized pieces of knowledge uh, on a daily basis to un- to activate that untapped potential in your mind and to help you transcend those beliefs, values, and rules that are controlling the way you think, feel, and act. So if you'd like to find out more about the book, go to CourageToChange.us. Uh, you can pre-order right now. It'll be out July 20th, CourageToChange.us, and I hope you'll experience that. Julie, all right, solutions to love. Let's, let's talk about that, right? You've been married 30 years. I've been married 20 years. Together, we've been married 50 years. So I think we have some information um, about love, about lasting love. Well, in I mean, I can only speak for my own marriage, but we use a lot of humor in our marriage and um, try not to take things too seriously and really try to step into each other's universes as much as possible. Yeah. So, and, and I felt really awkward using um, Dr. Gary's words this morning, but I just thought, I'll just wing it and try it out. And I had a smile on my face, you know. I, I said, oh, I I cherish and adore you. And he uh, sort of looked at me like, what's up, babe? What's up? <laughs> you what know? do you want? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh-oh, what's coming? Right, right. But, <laughs> yeah, um, but in a you know what? Note, it works. In a serious note, I, I like what you did because you got out of your comfort. You went into your uncomfortable zone. And you, you spoke it. It took courage to do that, a little courage. Not much, but a little bit. And as a result, he felt nourished. He felt uh, acknowledged. Because words are important. Mm, words are powerful. Words are powerful. Yeah. Words can hurt. Words can heal, yeah, right? Exactly. So in my marriage, um, I use, and, and Judy does too, we use a lot of listening. We really uh, we use presence. We get really present with each other. And really, you know, when, when she's sharing, I'm just, I've just got these giant ears. I just want to listen to her because I know that that's part of the way that she feels heard, she feels seen, and she feels acknowledged. Right. And for me, it's the same way. I love it when she's acknowledging. Actually, I don't, I don't care if she listens so much. I think what for me, for a man, what you did with your husband, when she does that to me, that, that really works for me. Mm-hmm. It, it stops me in my tracks. She'll go, you know, Ken, you're just an amazing man. You, you know, you're, you're, you're brilliant. You're amazing. I really love you. She says things like that. I'm like all over it. So I think that's the, those tips are really important for people that are, you know, sometimes we get uh, kind of complacent, especially when we've been married for a while. Right. And busy. And busy. Right. right. And through the course of marriages that last decades, you change. Your core values, hopefully, your core hopefully values you're to be seen, heard, and loved don't change. Right. All us primates want to be seen, heard, and loved. We need that. But your your uh, your goals might change throughout your marriage. Right. Your how tos might change, right. and you want to be supported. Exactly. Well, listen, I've I've uh, told many of my coaching clients this. I say, listen, if you want to grow. Go ahead and get in a relationship. If you want to really grow, get in a relationship, get married. If you really want to grow, get in a relationship, get married, and go into business together. You will grow. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I'll never do. It's going to business uh, with my spouse. Well, listen, we, we've done it. We've tried it. We're actually pretty good at it. Um, but we have a lot of really uh, clear boundaries of what works. And listen, I don't want a business partner. I want a wife, and she doesn't want a, a business partner. She wants a husband. Yeah. So when business is done... We're not we're not doing business. That's right? awesome. Yeah. Boundaries. Boundaries. Yeah. So we got about a minute, Julie. I want to first of all just acknowledge you being here, and uh, thank you so much for co-hosting. I know you're going to be back in two weeks. Um, I'm going to be taking a, a trip to the Poconos, 
and uh, with my wife's newfound brother. Um, so this, uh, yeah, we, hey, listen, that, uh, that's a story. That's You're going to leave us hanging. I'm going to leave you hanging until I get back. So yeah, ancestry is uh, pretty amazing. Wow. Uh, pretty amazing when it works. So we found a brother of hers and I'll, I'll tell you about it when I get back. All right. Listen, everybody, thank you so much for joining us thank again. You. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Uh, check us out on, uh, voices of courage.us for all the replays. And, of course, if you're having, uh, you're in the car and you don't remember uh, VoicesOfCourage.us, just Google us, Voices of Courage. All right. Have a brilliant week, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting VoicesOfCourage.us. And we're always interested in what you have to say. So follow Ken on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or email your questions and comments to viewer at voicesofcourage.us. Also, you can find all of Ken's previous shows by visiting voicesofcourage.us. Be sure to join us next time as Ken brings more stories of courage that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. Until next time, live courageously and see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. This has been Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. 